Well, because there's a definite link between having insufficient testosterone activity and having very low sexual desire in men, people have thought that this probably is true for women. However, it has not been proven to be the case. Nevertheless, there have been some studies of giving either a placebo or some testosterone in, in a patch form to women who have been diagnosed as having abnormally low sexual desire. Now, these women were still able to be sexual and basically to be admitted into the studies they had to report having two or three sexually um, satisfying events, encounters with their partner every month, but nevertheless wished they had more of a, of a wanting, if you will, or a, a hunger to be sexual. So those are the women that were studied and there's been two um, pharmaceutical companies looking at this. The first company did quite a few studies and they showed a little bit of benefit to these particular women in as much as if they use the placebo instead of having two or say two episodes a month it went to three and if they use the active testosterone patch it went to four. So not particularly impressive and the big problem of course is that these women to most people um, seem pretty normal, not abnormal, not disordered. Now, another company has just uh, published the results. They used, um, the, their subjects were, were very similar. They, they were women who were having rewarding sexual times, two, three times a month, but wished they had an appetite for more. And in this particular study, using a gel of testosterone, um, which was really giving the same amount of testosterone to the body, uh, there was no difference really between placebo and the active drug. So you might question why would anybody then give off-label testosterone to women, and indeed we do question that. But it is, it has been used off-label. Uh, whether this latest study will deter clinicians from doing this, who knows, it's only been published for a few months. Um, the patch is actually licensed in Europe, and there are some forms of testosterone available in Australia. Uh, there's nothing available uh, that's approved f for women in the States or in Canada. And it'll be interesting to see if this off-label use actually stops now or lessens in view of the latest study. And most people hope it will because we really have no long-term safety data of this. Uh, it really has to be given along with estrogen and most people are feeling Estrogen maybe should not be given long term after the menopause. There's minimal safety data on giving testosterone to premenopausal women and only a couple of years um, for postmenopausal women. And they were mostly using estrogen as well, which, as I'm sure you know, is mostly um, discontinued after maybe five years, um, although. It's also open to debate a little bit, but that's the standard advice from the various guidelines now.